Welcome to PJ's Worship, a virtual worship experience brought to you by the First Congregational Church of Dudley, Massachusetts, a United Church of Christ church. This week we welcome musical guests David Noggle, Kristen Noli, and our church trio, Bill Pedersen, Chris Robinson, and Sarah White. Welcome to PJ's Worship. Here we are now, April 11, the second Sunday of Easter. Please know I further reflect upon today's theme, Happy 104th Anniversary LBS, in our weekly e-newsletter, PJ's Place, sent on April 9, and PJ's podcast titled, Why the Hats? to be sent through my PJ's Place mailing list on April 14. Hey, thanks for joining us. As always, look to the end of this video to learn how to contact me by email, how to connect with our church family, our wider church family, through their websites. On our church website, if you follow us each week, you know this part already. You'll learn how to keep this ministry alive by the giving of your time, your talents, and your financial resources. And please remember, always remember, no matter who you are, no matter where you are along this journey of your life, you are so welcome here. Would you join with me in a time of opening prayer? Dearest God, thank you. Thank you for every moment of our lives Certain moments along life's journey, dearest God, have special significance, deep significance and meaning. So much so that along the journey of our lives, we remember annually the moment when a certain thing happened. Sometimes it's a remembrance of a great joy, the anniversary of, of a birth, the anniversary of a wedding, the anniversary in the case of this morning of the longest continuously active organization within our church family. At other times we remember times of grief and sadness. Yet even then, even those memories can also be tinged with new life, new hope. So as we think about all these things this morning, dearest God, simply be with us, be with us now in this time of worship and in this moment as together we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Today, we celebrate a group of women within our church family called the Ladies Benevolent Society, or LBS. Well, they've been around for a really long time. Founded on April 18, 1867, making them the longest continuously active organization serving our church family and local communities. Well, Pirate Jack is here again this week, the third week in a row. Here with us once again, this time to join in the celebration. So come along, let's go join him. Come along. Ah, let's see. Uh, Pirate Jack? Pirate Jack, are you here? Arr, hold your horses there, PJ, I say. Be a little patient there, would you? Hang on, hang on. Arr, now, that's better. What do you think now, PJ? What do you... Uh, what do I think about what, Pirate Jack? Well, PJ, look at me. I'm wearing me long clothes, of course. Uh, your long clothes? Yes, PJ. Every pirate has some long clothes for fancy special occasions on land, like celebrating those women in the LBS, as you and I want to do today. Hmm. Tell me more. It's a style of clothing we've never wear at sea. Where our clothes need to be tight-fitting so we don't trip over it, you see? Yet for these fancy parties, I put on me long clothes. Oh. A bit more loosely fit and fancy. Arr! Can you tell? <laughs> uh, 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 they uh, they uh, look the same as what you usually wear to me. Arr! Well, you are obviously no fashion expert there, PJ. Oh, well, I, okay, I'll take that. I, I do want to learn, though, uh, especially wondering today why women in our LBS wear hats on their anniversary. Oh, I can tell you that. You can? Well, of course. It makes them look beautiful. <laughs> well, sure. Uh, hey, yet they're already beautiful. Uh, I think it's more than that. So uh, <clears throat> I did some research. Oh, are did you discover any educational treasures there, PJ? Well, yes, I did. Uh, I'll tell you what I found. I um, I learned, for example, that in the Sikh faith tradition, you know, which our friend Valerie follows, a head covering is meant to show how all people are equal. Men wear turbans, women wear a long scarf or a turban. Some Sikhs don't wear any head covering at all, and, and that's okay, too. Well, that's interesting. Are any more treasure? Or was this one treasure chest fine? Oh, there's more. There's more than I have time to share for now. Uh, for example, my male Jewish cousins wear a head covering in synagogue, which is like church, to show respect. Yet in our church, men wearing hats in the sanctuary is considered disrespectful. So you know what? It's hard to know what to think. Well, yar, it is. So what about the women in our LBS wearing hats on their anniversary? Oh, well, here's the thing. In the Bible, 
in the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, I made a discovery. In chapter 11, there's a confusing piece of scripture which many women in our LBS might not like very much. Maybe they want to look it up. Having to do with men and women. And it does suggest women ought to wear hats in church. The Bible also says people aren't supposed to wear clothes made of both linen and wool, which is silly today. Arr! If I remember right, that's found in Leviticus 19.19. 19. Arr! Mm, you surprise me sometimes, Jack. I surprise myself too sometimes. Arr! Arr! Oh. So why do you think these women in the LBS wear hats on their anniversary? Well, the truth is, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm not sure any of them know how this hat wearing started. Yet I do think I know why for some of them it's so important to keep doing it now. Arr, you stumped me there, PJ, why? Hey, well, I think that they want to feel connected to all the other women of the Ladies Benevolent Society who were here before them. Those women might have had a different reason for the hats, yet for our women today, they just want to feel connected to those women who served so long ago, and, well, for some of them, at least, it can be fun. Oh, here, I brought along some of my favorite hats to show you. Hey, let me know what you think. And let me see here. Uh, there's this one. This one uh, it used to belong to my stepdad. He was a hunter. Uh, this to keep his ears warm in the wintertime. Maybe it looks a little silly, though. Mm, are your ears warm? Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Here, we'll go on to the next one here. Oh, this one. I'm going to wear this one maybe tomorrow if it's cold out. This is a fancy hat, and I have a fancy occasion tomorrow. Do I look fancy? Mm, yeah, fancy. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Oh, and this next one, this is my favorite hat. This is my desert hat. I wore this hat in the desert a few years ago. I, I, I think maybe, I think maybe this hat makes me look a little bit like Indiana Jones. What do you think? Mm. Arr, you should stick to being Pastor John. Being uh, a fashion expert is not your thing. You put one of those on me there, PJ. Hey, all right. Hey, you can try. Hey, this, you can try on my favorite hat. Let me see. I'm going to put it on you. And there you go. What? Oh, PJ, I can't see. PJ, I'll just put it beside me. Oh, and sorry about that. Jeez. Actually, I thought it looked good. Now, and now, 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 I think it's time to pray. Remember the LBS and their years of service to our church family. The book Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35 says... We're supposed to share the best of everything with one another. And the LBS has been doing that for 154 years. So share with them your very best praying there, PJR. Oh, all right, Jack. Thanks for asking. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you when on April 18, one week from today, our LBS turns 154 Encourage us to reach out to an LBS member this week as they may be feeling lonely during this pandemic. Thank you for their 154 years of faithful service to our church family, to one another, and to our local communities, sharing the best of them with everyone around them. Amen. Amen. And congratulations to that, that LBS. Hey, maybe they'll invite me to one of their meetings after COVID. Oh. I'd probably sail in for that, I tell you. Oh. Thanks, Jack. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus. It's the scepter. It's the throne. Out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left 
and sorrow now. Hallelujah, He is nearest. Faith, feelings, nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received Him when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget His promise? I am with you forevermore. Hallelujah, bread of heaven, here on earth our food, our stay. Hallelujah, hear the sinful flee to you from day to day. Intercessor, friend of sinners, earth's redeemer, hear our plea. Where the songs of all the sinless sweep across the crystal sea. Everything shared. That's the story we're told from the earliest days of the church as followers of Jesus tried their best to live Jesus' radical way of love, not only for themselves, yet also for the entire world. Listen now to this brief yet deeply significant story from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. I'll read today from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all there was not a needy person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold they laid it at the apostles feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Bless these words, God. Thank you for those who wrote them and for everyone everywhere who has worked to make our hearing them now possible. Let their efforts not be wasted as this radical love is shared abundantly with us. Help us to abundantly share everything of ourselves with others. Amen. Welcome here on this once a year Sunday as we celebrate the good works and the good fellowship shared by the good community of our Ladies Benevolent Society, our LBS, a special welcome to the members of our LBS joining us at this time. Welcome. We call them, we call our Ladies Benevolent Society, our LBS, we call them ours, even if we've never been to an LBS meeting ourselves. They are ours, the longest continuously active organization of our church family, having served for 154 years as of one week from today, April 18. They are like our great, great, great grandmothers, even though they never seem to age at all. Now, that's quite an accomplishment. They are our group of wonderful women who have met to support one another, 
their church family, their various pastors and their families, their communities and their country in different ways at different times. They are, they are ours. And it makes us feel richer to have them be a part of our lives. We claim them as our own. You know, we all need some things to claim as ours, don't we? Yeah, we do. Beginning in kindergarten, at least for me, I bet for you too, beginning in kindergarten, we learn to respect one another's personal space. That's ours. We learn that it's ours and it's our right to be protective of it. You know, little Johnny or, or little Sally are, are taught about personal bubbles and how it's rude to intrude on the personal bubble of another person. Unless you're invited to move into that space as when, for example, you are invited to give someone a hug, right? Oh, how we miss our hugs. We do. Listen, please. If you haven't yet been vaccinated, get yourself signed up. At least do what you can, won't you? be part of this process. I'm signed up, I'm very fortunate now, I'm signed up to begin my vaccination process on May 3rd. Looking forward to that. You do that too. So hopefully, one day in the not too distant future, we can give one another a hug again. Or shake one another's hand. Next week, things are going to be looking a little bit differently here. We are going to be, we are going to have a soft reopening again on uh, April 18. And uh, who knows? Who knows what the fall is going to look like, but we are hoping. We are hoping that little by little by little, we can get more that part of us that we yearn to have back the way it was. Being able to shake hands, give hugs. Get that vaccination, please. Get that vaccination when and as you can. Well, anyway, we all need some stuff, which is ours, right? In, in many homes, uh, ours included, if people set aside personal stuff in small private corners, like a bit of chocolate perhaps, like this is my little stash over there, you know, you might have to like open up a particular door, maybe you've put it in a safe, you know, anyway. A little bit of chocolate perhaps, but maybe a personal letter too. Uh, something someone special gave to you, a private sharing of one heart to another. We all need a few private things which are just ours. But then there's everything else, and it's the everything else that we tend to get all confused about. Do something for me, would you? <clears throat> Actually, right where you are, wherever you are, listening to this, watching this now, do something for me. Would you think about Kind of look around you, whatever space you are in right now. Look around you. Think about everything that you have around you right now, right where you are. Right where you are. Think about the money in your wallet or your purse. Think about whatever else surrounds you. Perhaps uh, a pen. Perhaps some paper. And maybe a musical instrument or a telephone. Think about, uh, think about all those things. Think about maybe some keys in your pocket or hanging on your wall. Keys which unlock 
various things, keys which unlock uh, maybe your home, your apartment, or maybe if you're extraordinarily fortunate, maybe keys that unlock your homes or your cars, trucks, file cabinets, safe deposit boxes, and more. Think about gift certificates, insurance and business cards. Think about, again, your, your phone that you may be watching this on right now, or your computer that you may be watching this on right now. And some of this stuff surrounding you is really important for you to have as yours alone. I mean, maybe you've got some medication on you or close by, which is a prescription written just for you or your child or someone else. And it's important for you, it's important for this, to remain just yours. That's not to be shared. That's just yours. Yet what about so much of the other stuff that you have? And especially, what about whatever money you have? How do you think about that? Do you buy a, a beautiful hat? Maybe. Maybe if you're a, a member of Our Lady's Benevolent Society. Listen to my podcast this week. Uh, I'll say a little bit more about the wearing of hats by the members of Our Lady's Benevolent Society. You've already heard me talk to Pirate Jack about it a little bit, and I put a video out uh, down by the prayer on my PJ's place as well. What do you do with your money? Do you buy a beautiful hat? Maybe. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's no perfect answer about what you ought to do. It's, it's complicated. Yet this story from the book of Acts points us to a process for thinking about our stuff. I always want you to use that gray matter between your ears. If there's been one of a few themes I've had with you all these years, I would say that's one of them. Thinking about our stuff. Thinking about how to share. Now, for example, if you do have the gift of song, maybe you do have a musical instrument nearby, maybe you can sing. Right? Yet you keep that song to yourself. Or maybe your song is shared through writing, whatever it is. If you keep that song to yourself, if you keep that gift that you have to yourself, what good is that? Oh, that's easy to think about. <laughs> but what about all that other stuff? The things that aren't as easy. Some of what is most precious to you can be shared even though you wouldn't want to part with it forever. Some of what you have can be shared, even though you wouldn't want to part with it forever. Now think about your photos. Think about your photos. It's a little different today with uh, photos all on like, I don't know, Google Photo or whatever. But uh, back in my day, before all that, oh man, they're in photo albums, right? My wife, God bless her, she does her best to keep these photo albums still. And I love to share our family photos, yet I wouldn't want to give them to you. Not the hard copies, not in those carefully maintained photo albums, because they hold such important encouragement. Meant especially for me. Some of those photos, at least, for me, my family, and you know what? I mean, that's okay. And so we think about what can be shared and how we can share it. And I'm, I'm sharing with you now that the simple act of your thinking about all this has you ahead of the curve from so many others who just don't give it a thought. 
But you're part of this Jesus community. You're part of the followers of Jesus who from the, this moment uh, recalled in the book of Acts here have been struggling for millennia to think about how we're supposed to share. Well, we're supposed to share the best of everything we have. And when we get to doing it well, like, like that community we're focusing on in the book of Acts and that community of the Ladies' Benevolent Society, well, it gets to feeling good. You feel less bound up and stuck when you're not always just so like protective of all the stuff. You gain freedom too when you are less burdened by stuff. And when we share well, you and I get better and better at showing forth the face of Jesus to the entire world. In the next two verses, following the verses I have read here, in the next two verses in the book of Acts, a man named Joseph is so giving that the community gives him a new name, actually gives him a new name. They call him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. To be a son or daughter of encouragement. All we have to do, all we have to do, is to give whatever we have to give. Whatever we have to give. And it won't be the same. What you have to give and I have to give, they're not the same. I have the gift of being able to do what I'm doing now. That may not be your gift. I was reflecting just last evening with my wife how I don't feel that I'm someone who has a very wide array of gifts. But I can do this. And I can do a few other things. And so I do those things to the best of my abilities and you do what you are called to do. That's the point. To be a son or daughter of encouragement, all we have to do is give whatever we have to give to share whatever we have to share. It sounds easy, right? But it's not, of course. Yet there are organizations which at least strive to live by this radical sharing. The Ladies' Benevolent Society has been at it for 154 years. Our church family has been at it for 289. Now, we're not perfect, yet we have committed to this journey. The needs change through the years, and we try to be responsive to those changes. We have certainly been doing that this past year. And I'm already thinking and starting to move with our church family to think about other changes on the horizon, other new, the next new ways of our being together. In the early days of the LBS, for example, for example, one of the goals of the LBS has always been outreach to the pastor and his family and, and the home, the parsonage that we live in. In the early days of the LBS, for example, they voted to provide the first flush toilet the parsonage ever had. As I say, that's where I live, and let me just say, I'm grateful. Thank you, LBS. We appreciate that flush toilet. I'm only kidding. It's had one for a long time now. In addition to reaching out to a member of the LBS this week, and by the way, please do that. That's why I'm having this service a week before the actual day of their anniversary. Uh, that in addition to the fact that maybe some, some glitches next week as we move to the next new way of being together. But also just so that it'll give you some time to reach out to a member of the LBS because maybe they've been stuck at home and they're feeling lonely and reach out. Wish them a happy 
anniversary. So in addition to reaching out to a member of the LBS this week, I offer you another challenge too. As you consider all your stuff surrounding you now, share. Share something. Share some part of it with someone this week in a way that you hadn't considered before hearing these words. Now, bless all gifts given and all gifts received in Jesus' name. So now when you hear me say, reflecting upon our scripture for today, when you hear me say, what did they share? Please respond by saying everything they had. I'll say, what did they share? And you'll say, everything they had. Let's begin. Those who gathered together following the resurrection of Jesus decided to make some radical decisions as their response to their understanding of the journey Jesus was calling them on. What did they share? Everything they had. Those who gathered together decided to encourage the growing of the new life Jesus gave to them. What did they share? Everything they had. Those who formed themselves, to, those who formed themselves together Decided they were stronger, united than divided. Decided they could accomplish more with more. Decided they had the power to transform the world with the power of their love. What did they share? Everything they had. Those who gathered with one heart and soul did so possessing the one mind of Christ. What did they share? Everything they had. Help us do the same, O oh God, sharing the best of everything, the best of who we are. Amen.
I thank you so much for joining us here this week for another edition of PJ's Worship from the First Congregational Church of Dudley, United Church of Christ. I am so blessed to be a part of this church family, and you are now part of this church family. Whether you are officially a member of our church family or or a friend of our church family because you live locally and you, you join us here uh, during in-person worship during normal times, or, or, or maybe you, you are actually joining us here on YouTube from some distant community or, or out of state, or wouldn't it be amazing from some other country it's possible. I am so happy to be part of this community and I'm so happy to be part of this community with you. Join us week after week. Support us as you can. And join with me now during this time of closing prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you for gifts given and gifts received. As we seek to share our best with others, help us to give well without fanfare and with joy. As others seek to share the best of them with us, help us to receive well with gladness and simple thanks. Forgive us those days we believe we have nothing of value to share. Forgive us for forgetting the gift we ourselves can be and the small acts of kindness we can offer. A smile, a listening ear, a word of encouragement. Jesus who encourages us to be our best Challenge us to give in ways it is most difficult for us to give. Causing us to step out of our comfort, yet into the full joy of new life. Holy Spirit, fill us with the desire to share the best of us with everyone we are blessed to share this life with. Amen. Well, once again, a special blessing this day on the members of our Ladies Benevolent Society, our LBS. Happy anniversary to each and every one of you. I know this has been a challenging year for all of us. I know this has been a challenging year for you. So from my heart, special love to each and every member of our LBS. And then special love from my heart sent to each and every person joining with us now. 
And do me a favor too. If you enjoy what you are receiving here from this church family, share. Share and share some more. God bless you. God keep you and your family healthy, safe, and well in mind and body and spirit. God, gi God give to you and to your family peace and hope and, and not just through this pandemic time, but always God center you and your family in the strength and in the power of love. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen.